it's done very uh, a great deal for me it's done and um, the crowd here are very very good and um, they get behind the boys and um, they support them very well and they might put Scotland in the map actually because um, there's not many venues you can have in Scotland not unless it's a world title fight but for all the up and coming boys when I was up and coming I boxed here so and this is where world champions are made. The Pat Clinton world title fight that has Doing that under the banner of St Andrews, albeit it was in the Kelvin Hall, was uh, a lifelong ambition. If I, if I had never promoted another fight after that, I would have felt in myself that I had done everything that I ever really wanted to do. But once that was out, then I wanted to do things. But at that particular time, that was all I ever wanted to do. Now I keep looking toward uh, things that people have never done before. Um, St Andrews was the first to, to use the WBC International in a private club, we've done that, we've done the WBA in the club, we've done European title fights, you know, we've done a lot of firsts and that, that's important because it helps to, to uh, keep the profile of the club up and it certainly helps to keep the members and their guests happy. I think it's only when you see 20 years condensed into just over 10 minutes you realise that at about 10 to 1, 50 minutes late, a protest from Tommy Gilmore to Doherty's manager, eventually though Donny Hood on the scales and when he was weighed he was bang on. Donny Hood, eight stone six exactly. Well, it was a wait for Dr. T, but eventually he took to the scales as well. Just a fraction under. Hood off the eight stone five and a quarter pound. Joe, so you've had a bit of a problem with a hand injury. First of all, how is the injury? Fine on. I've had a lot of sparring. It's not given me any problems. Uh, not had any problems at all. It should be okay. You must be quite pleased that some of your recent fights have uh, finished inside the distance, which would indicate that you've been punching pretty hard. Uh, well, since I went to Peter Harrison, my new trainer, uh, he showed me how to punch harder and things have just been working out okay. I've no been going out to stop, guys. It's just been happening. And it's a bonus. Mm -hmm. How much of a difference has it meant to you coming back here to be based in Scotland? It's meant a lot of difference because I, can, I settled down, you know what I mean? I was down in London, I was buzzing up here and been back down there. And but now I'm up here, I'm settled down and uh, everything's okay. I've got my girlfriend up here, you know what I mean, things like that. Everything's Boxing obviously the first thing in your mind. Should you be successful, uh, what do you think the future holds for you? Hopefully, if I want to win the one deal belt out right first, if I can get it to keep, and then uh, probably go into European title, and then if, if I win that, go into world title. But it's a long way away, but I'm just going to try and take one day at a time and keep this one deal belt. Preparations have gone according to plan, so finally, what are, your, what are your thoughts about tonight's outcome? I'm going to win, but I think it will go the distance. Uh, I'm prepared to go the distance, but if, if it doesn't, I'm, I'm happy if I, I finish them three, as long as it isn't me. Well, that's the build-up. Let's now get to the main event. The British bantamweight champion, the champion is Drew Doherty from Condorit against the challenger, Donny Hood from Glasgow. At ringside, WBO flyweight champion, Pat Clinton, alongside Jim Neely. Thank you, well, gentlemen. The St Andrews Sporting Club proudly presents the main event of the evening, and in a championship contest over 12 three-minute rounds for the champ bantamweight championship of Great Britain. The contest is made at eight stone six pounds. Presenting and introducing. On my left and in the red corner, the challenger, the Scottish bantamweight champion and former undefeated WBC international bantamweight champion from Glasgow, Donny Hood. <laughs> and on my right, gentlemen, in the blue corner, also my pleasure to present and introduce the official British bantamweight champion from Croy, Drew Doherty. <laughs> Your referee for this contest, appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control, Mr. Dave Paris from London. Your timekeeper, Mr. Jim Russell from Glasgow. Your steward in charge this evening, Mr. Jerry Woolard, the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Alistair Howie. At the weigh-in today, Doherty scale, eight stone, five pounds, four ounces, hood scale, eight stone, six pounds. Doherty blue corner, hood red corner. Well, the referee, Dave Parrish, 
giving him last minute instructions they don't even bother looking at each other because i have a feeling they'll be seeing quite a lot of each other over what's scheduled for a 12 rounder for the british bantamweight title identification fairly straightforward the man in black the champion making his first defense of this title is drew doherty former amateur star with the croy club and his opponent is 29 two years older the man with a, with a little ponytail coming down his back is donny hood the uh, official scottish bantamweight champion a title he won quite a few years ago and has never yet got round to defending so it's doherty the british champion in black and donny hood the scottish champion in white with the black stripe he won this title by defeating another Scot, Joe Kelly. And Hood has been in a lot more contests. He's had no fewer than 30. And a number of them have been for titles. And he is an undefeated WBC international champion. That's for men outside the top 10. A title which he never lost in the ring, having lost uh, for a European title challenge. And the WBC decided to strip him of that because of that defeat. And that, I think, still rankles with Donny Hood. Doherty then in black, the 27-year-old. Hood, a challenger, white, a 29. Good solid right hand from Hood in the opening round. And again. It's almost... 20 years ago to the day since it was what can only be described as a classic between Ken Buchanan and Jim Watt for the lightweight title. And this certainly has all the makings of another exciting contest. 15 rounds did Watt and Buchanan, this scheduled for 12. A minute remaining haven't had to go looking for each other in this opening round. Nothing desperately tentative at all. Yes, Jim, in this opening round here, the boys are certainly not holding back. They're going to look for one another, and I don't think at this pace it's going to be very hard to see going 12 rounds. Thoughts then from the reigning WBO flyweight champion, Pat Clinton. That was a shove. But Donny Hood has done some pretty good work in this opening round, and uh, he's crowded the champion, Drew Doherty. About 10 seconds remaining. That awkward crouching style of Hood's really posing a problem. Stiff little jab from Doherty at the end of the round, and Donny Hood feels he's done enough to just take that round. So what? Very interesting opening three minutes we had in this British bantamweight title defence for Drew Doherty. And there's the champion himself. This is just his tenth professional fight, and uh, a British champion after nine fights, which is a pretty good record indeed. 27-year-old. Uh, he's only had one draw, and that was against uh, a very difficult man that most people have trouble with, a gentleman called Rocky Lawler. But he's won eight of those contests. There was nine contests, three of them inside the distance. And he's shown in his last two or three fights that, uh, as well as being a very good boxer, he can punch as well. And a fair smearing of grease underneath the right eye, which would indicate that uh, there is a little bit of a bruising there, an indication that Donny Hood's punches have got through. Seconds out. Round two. Donny Hood in the white, managed by... Alex Morrison, has been a pro since September 1986, and a point to win over Stuart Fishermack. Won his first couple of contests through the third and lost the fourth. But he's been in with uh, an altogether different class of fighter than Drew Doherty. Doherty seems to be the coming man. with Tommy Gilbert now for the past couple of years. Won this title in June of 1992, stopping Joe Kelly, who 
the then champion in five rounds and a, a very impressive performance that was from Drew Doherty. This is a better start to the second round for Doherty, Jim. He's beginning to move his head a little bit more and making Hood miss a lot easier. I think he was a bit nervous in the first round, uh, being the champion, defending it. You find that, um, I think he settled down a little bit more in this round. Hood's tending, tending to stay fairly static as he comes in, and as Pat Clinton so rightly observed, Doherty moving a little bit more. Hood has fought also for the Commonwealth title, he lost it to a very tough Australian called Ray Minus. He lost the contest in June of 1989, but that didn't deter him too much because he went on then to win his next nine contests. And this is 31st today. Some blood coming from Donny Hood's nose, Jim. You see here in the second round. Just a little trickle coming down from the right nostril. He had a, a cut uh, on his lip coming into this contest. Doherty starting to settle and starting to concentrate, got caught there with a good left from Hood as he moved backward. Fast right from the challenger. And interesting, not a great deal of noise coming from the dinner jacketed crowd here in the 40 Quest Hotel in Glasgow. But they're watching this contest, contest with considerable intent. who's been out of action for quite some time is thinking of uh, returning to the ring he's now boxing as a, a featherweight both of course were distinguished amateur champions and Drew Doherty took no fewer than six Scottish titles and a good finish again by Doherty and Hood on a wee bit of pressure at the end of that second round and was getting caught once or twice and back he goes to the corner and that's Donny Hood the challenger the 29 year old and he's up against a very good man, and uh, again, the almost obligatory smear of grease over the eyes. And Hood, Hood breathing fairly heavily. He left things a little bit late at the weigh-in today. That's Donny Hood then getting some advice and being told to suck in the breath. This is 31st fight, and uh, he's lost six and won nine of them inside the distance. Second out. Round three. Almost 600 people here to watch this British bantamweight title in what's been described as the home of Scottish boxing. Since that great contest between Watt and Buchanan, there have been some memorable evenings here, and this promises to be another one. Who would have a funny feeling has been told by the corner to step up the pace a little bit. As Doherty started to settle in the second round. The defending champion in black, Blue Doherty. He lost a couple of uh, finals in the ABAs to uh, the great John Lyon, who was virtually unbeatable in Britain at light flyweight and flyweight. And Doherty, having lost the 1989 Scottish flyweight title, but John McLean decided to turn pro, and he's done so successfully. And this now, Pat Clinton is starting to warm up very nicely. Yes, it's a great fight turning into be. Um, I've given the first two rounds, um, the first round to Hood and the second round to Doherty. I think it's a very interesting contest indeed. The both boys look in excellent condition and they're punching very hard. Well, all that tentative stuff, such as there was of it in the first round, seems now to have disappeared and the pace has lifted considerably. And they're now going to start taking a few more chances, I have a feeling. A solid right hand coming in there from Donny Hood. Boxing, as ever, sponsored by Tartan Special. And this has the makings of uh, a pretty special fight. Yes, Jim Docker is just beginning to find his rhythm now, his range, his rhythm, and he's, he's slipping and moving and counting very well. And that's, that's a bad sign for Donahue because when Drew 
gets into this situation. He's a very, very good boxer. It didn't take Drew Doherty very long to get into his rhythm against uh, the dominion of Joe Kelly, whom he stopped in five rounds in June of last year. He's a far better fighter when he doubles his punches up, Jimmy. You notice there, two and three punches. You always catch him with one anyway. Hood flinging single shots, and that'll shoot Drew all the way. Hood coming forward, but uh, starting to miss. He hasn't quite got the range at this stage. About 30 seconds remaining, and this is the third round. A schedule for 12, remember, at 8 stone 6. And Hood coming in exactly on 8 stone 6. And Doherty at 8, 5 and a quarter, exactly the same weight he was when he defeated Joe Kelly to take this title. The formidable figure of Dave Parrish. Just breaking the two of them up. Right! And a bit of a ticking off. I don't think Donny Hood uh, continued that deliberately after the command of break, such was his enthusiasm. But he got that a little bit tight, I think, Pat Clinton, in that third round. Yes, I mean, uh, it was just a bit of rush of blood there at the end. The adrenaline still pumping. But I think... Um, that was a more convincing round for Dockery again. That's me giving it two rounds to Dockery and one round to Hood. Um, so, but uh, Dockery's finding his rhythm very well there in the third round. And as I said, Hood's going to find it very difficult to enter the fight to let him do these things. A little bit of action from that third round. And that was a nice piece of slipping. And Dockery came inside his man very well and caught him with a good right hand. And as Pat Clinton was saying, doubled it up nicely and left and right again. Hood looking a little bit apprehensive and Doherty lunged forward and caught his man. A great buzz of excitement now running round all the tables. The Burns Night Supper now forgotten and they're concentrating on this, the main event of the evening. Drew Doherty, just to remind you, the bantamweight champion of Britain in black. Donny Hood and White, the bantamweight champion of Scotland, right. and undefeated WBC international champion. A title he won in October of 1990 when he beat uh, Samuel Duran of the Philippines. Defended it the following year in March against Virgilio Openo, another Filipino, and then against the Ghanaian, Rocky Comney. That was in September of 91. So a great sequence for Donny Hood. And although he's been involved in two British bantamweight eliminators and won them, this is his first time fighting for the title. And it's a title that he really, really wants. Right. A little bit of indiscipline slipping into the work of Donny Hood, Pat. Yes, well, it's more, I think it's more an eagerness than anything else, John, because uh, he's, he's there to win the, he's trying to win the title and um, sometimes you do get carried away. I mean, you, you don't notice the referee's in there, you're that budget just punching. Doherty now moving more. And jabbing in twos and threes, and nice footwork by the defending champion. hard shots going in from Hood, but Doherty taking them on the forearms, on the elbows. Just like to point out, Jim, at this moment, um, I know Drew Doherty is a bit, a heartbeat of something at 45 when he's standing still, I mean, it's just very low for an athlete, and I think the longer the fight goes, I mean, um, it'll shoot him down to the ground, because, I mean, his heartbeat is so low, it's unbelievable. Well, not only do I envy him being uh, under eight and a half stone, I envy him that sort of a heartbeat. I don't know that I envy him being in in such a difficult contest against such a tough man as Donny Hood. Good shot by Hood. Doherty just moved out of the way of it in time. You can see Jim both boys in next condition. And this is four rounds and they've been at it from the start. Great to see this. Well, I do get the impression that Doherty is looking the fresher. I know Hood has this peculiar crouch style, but it does occur to me maybe that uh, Doherty looks the more comfortable. And he's sharper and crisper. That's another good run, and I was 
suggest Pat another good run for Drew Doherty. Yes, I mean, uh, I give him that round as well, John, and um, things are going very well for the, the champion at the moment. Uh, it's still a great fight uh, to watch here, and um, hopefully it does go to 12 rounds because I'm enjoying this very much indeed. Well, Drew Doherty certainly seems to be enjoying it. A look of uh, immense and intense concentration on his face as Peter Harrison applies some uh, grease. Donkey Jart, one of the best cuts men in the business, and that uh, colourful tartan jacket just leaning over as well. I'm sure Dave Paris will ask for a lot of that to be rubbed off because it's rather excessive. But that's Doherty. Just one little blemish in his career. A draw with Rocky Lawler in Birmingham. Over eight rounds. Cardinals 10 seconds. Seconds out. Round five. Donny Hood comes out of his corner after four. Very interesting runs for this British bantamweight title. Hood with the uh, distinctive pigtail. Hardly recognizable from the uh, rather wild looking individual who turned up for the weigh in today. And Hood grimace there, and that's a sign that Doherty has got through to him. Yes, that's correct, because I know when I've done it to a few people in their life, like, that's no that you've had them a good shot. Um, Doherty is actually piling on the press at the moment, doubling the punches up beautifully, and um, he's showing his class right there just now. Doherty now starting to vary the shots. He went to the ribs there, got underneath the uh, right hand of Donny Hood and caught him in that lower rib, which is something that really takes the wind out of the sails. I mean, it shows you how good Docker is at the moment because um, Donny Hood's a very good fighter. You see the class of boys he's been in with. And, um, and Docker is doing very well. A little trickle of blood now coming down from the nose of uh, Drew Doherty. But nothing I don't think to worry about. As Pat Clinton was saying, Hood has been in with uh, some very, very classy men indeed and lost uh, in a European title challenge to a gentleman called Johnny Bridal from Denmark. He was stopped in seven. And interestingly, that was a bad uh, left hand from Hood. Interestingly, Bridal was one of the few top amateurs to have beaten uh, Drew Doherty in internationals. Almost 20 times he wore the amateur vest of Scotland with distinction. There again, Doherty going for the body and coming back to the head with those short lefts. Doherty's turned to Grimace and Hood perhaps sensing that there's an opening there, but that was a good shot by Hood and he'll need to try to press home this advantage in this the fifth round. Doherty, perhaps just for the first time in this contest, looking ever so slightly vulnerable. Yes, he got a little left uppercut there from Donny Hood. It's uh, one of his better punches, Donny's, and uh, he, got, he caught flush in the chin with it, but Doherty stood up to it well, but he was caught vulnerable there. Doherty has taken that shot well and has come back. He's missing with uh, as many as he's landing. Dave Parrish having no real problems pushing these uh, eight and a half stoners apart. Good covering up by Doherty as Hood came in. And a snappy right from the champion. This is a very, very good contest. And Doherty ever so slightly the better. Well, that was a good round. Donny Hood goes back and sucks in the air. He uh, came forward well on one occasion in that round and did catch the reigning champion, Drew Doherty, with a very good shot. Alec Morrison leaning over the ropes, looking uh, anxiously at his charge, the 29-year-old Donny Hood. Well, there's a man who, if anything, looks even better than he did on the 29th of January 1973 when he lost his British title to another great Scott, Ken Buchanan, and how well Jim Watt really does look and enjoying this evening, a man who knows his boxing inside and out. Carlos, 10 seconds. 
Second out. Round six. This then the round to take us up to the halfway point in this British bantamweight title defence for Drew Doherty, the champion. In black, Donny Hood in white, the man with a pigtail. As apart from perhaps the first round, find it difficult to come to terms with the uh, variation in tactic from Doherty. And almost every time the head of Hood is snapped back, and if he's going to win this contest, Pat, then he's going to try to get inside Drew Doherty, I have a feeling. Yes, well, um, Don is trying everything at the moment, but uh, Drew seems to be coping with it. Um, he's moving very well. He's slipping, he's coming back with plenty of punches. And Don at this moment doesn't really seem to know what to do with him. He's covering up well inside, Doherty, both hands. Right hand up there, covering from the left too. So uh, Don has got a hard task in his hands, I think. Was a good shot to the head of Doherty on the ropes by Hood, but Doherty used his feet beautifully and came off the ropes. But he can't afford to be getting too confident. He looks at this stage to be reasonably comfortably ahead on points, and he'd like to keep it like that. But this all could change. Slight bit of bruising under the eye of Donny, uh, Donny Hood's left eye there, Jim. Well, there certainly is, and Doherty finding a lot of... Uh, very good hand speed inside, doubling up the shots very nicely. Well, they're both bouncing up and down in their toes in great condition. Grin of determination has Doherty put in a good left hand. Still a little trickle of blood coming down from the uh, left nostril of Donny Hood, but nothing to worry about, I'm quite sure. That's what Donny Hood has to do at the moment. He's, he start, he's got to start moving from side to side. Um, it's too static in the middle of the ring, and Drew's finding them very easy to hit. So he needs to start moving from side to side a bit more. Right! And a good right hand from Doherty, just creeping over the guard of Hood. Final few seconds of this round. Donny Hood grins because that last little right hand from Joe Doherty certainly got through to him. And Hood breathing deeply and heavily and is finding it tough enough at this stage. Doherty, well, he really is starting to breathe a little bit as well, and you'd hardly blame him. It was another very, very good round, and the pace of anything has increased from the first. There's Hood coming lunging forward, and Doherty caught on the ropes. A lovely piece of countering, and away he went after getting caught with that initial right hand. And again, Hood missing, turning his man round. Doherty getting inside with the left that finally caught him. Well, there oh, is uh, another all-time great Scott, the wonderful Ken Buchanan, the man who lost his uh, world title to an even greater man, Roberto Duran. So into the second half of this contest, one or two people thought rounds six, seven, and eight were going to be the crucial rounds if it was going to be stopped. But there is now the feeling that it's going to go the full 12, and uh, what great value for money that's going to be if it does go 12 rounds. A tentative start we had from Doherty, but since then, he's been ever slow slightly the boss. Johnny Hood grimaces because uh, he's starting to lunge a little bit and Doherty is retaining his composure. Yes, that's a little sign of desperation when your phone punches like that. 
Um, Dockery's making a miss very easy and come back with three and four counter punches and, and look very classy at this moment. I mean, for Drew's only 10 professional fight, I mean, it's unbelievable how much um, from amateur days to attempt pro, pro fights and defending a British title is unbelievable, I think, Jim. Well, he has learned very, very quickly, yeah. especially in the last couple of years since uh, after a spell with Mike Barrett as his manager, he decided to make the journey managerially northward and sign up with Tommy Gilmer and what a difference that's made. And a great sparring he's had. And Peter Harrison, he gives a lot of credit to for improving his overall performances and indeed his timing of a punch. Like Joe Kelly, he was stopped by him in five rounds last June. We'll testify to that. Clubbing left from Hood didn't quite connect. Well, Hood's still very strong and very dangerous. While Doherty's defense has been pretty tight. Just won't let it slip at all. The sharpness Jim is still with Drew Docker at the moment, I think. He's still flinging out that left jab and doubling it up, doubling up the punches. And he seems to be in a nip area to it. And good play of punches from Docker there right again. Docker moving very nicely from the waist. His, uh, his defense has been first class. It wasn't a bad left from Hood went in. Every so often you do get the impression that Hood might just have won a good company. But the, the thing is, he's only flinging one shot at a time, Jim. You know, if, if he maybe double up the left hand, uh, left right, you know, it's always just a, a single left or a single right. It's never one, two, three punches, which uh, Docker is doing. Another good round of boxing, and again, with a nice little one, two, three combination. Good work from Doherty. Another angle. Hood's still dangerous, but lunging more than anything else. And uh, that wasn't a bad left from him. And Doherty wisely closed his man down and covered up at the last minute. What a great round. Oh, yes, thing, uh, the thing here, Jim, is it's, it's showed there in the, the rear on um, Drew's thrown a lot more shots in landing, and Drew's, uh, Doc is, uh, sorry, Donnie's almost flinging a single shot in landing. Seven rounds gone then. And Dockery ahead, certainly in my card on points. I heard a fair old bit to do. He'd probably need to win most of the remaining rounds if it goes the distance to take this title from, from Doherty. And Doherty knows exactly what he has to do to hold on. And he won't want to do that too often, because although he was on the retreat, there was a fair bit of shoulder behind that. Yes, it was a good right hand from Donny Hood there. But as I say, if he followed that up with a left left hook, what more damage it could have done. But he caught again with this time with Hood's left. It's a fantastic contest, Jim, to watch. I mean, I, I'm really delighted I'm here watching this fight. Two boys in a great condition. Patrick, I would say we're delighted to have you here. Thank you. Not quite uh, the same amount of moving and jabbing and circling. But it's now settled down to be a real hard contest. And the harder puncher, he just emerged the victor. So I think Donny Hood's got his second wind in this round. You know, it just seems to be a wee bit more aggressive than he was in the last couple of rounds before this. And uh, he's getting back into the fight in this round. Well, he's gone back to what he was doing in the first round, and that's uh, trying to force the pace. Lovely conjuring, though, by Doherty. He really is a, a lovely mover. Sways nicely from the waist. And who just shakes out the fist, maybe a little bit of stiffness coming into the limbs. Uh, Hood allows himself the luxury of a grip. Was ducking into a right hand. 
Some terrific punching from both boys here at the moment. Uh, left hook, straight right, and body shots. Um, it's a treat to watch. This is probably the best round of boxing in the contest so far. But he just got out of that by a whisker. Still covering up, Doherty. Well, 10 seconds remaining, and what a stunningly good round this has been. And as Pat Clinton, quite rightly observed, who certainly, having looked a little bit wobbly, has come back and passed a very baleful glance at the champion, Drew Doherty, who goes back to his corner. And I think the corner may have one or two sharp words to say to Drew Doherty because uh, he did show signs that his defence just wasn't as good as it had been in the previous rounds. Well, I think the corner men um, kind of gave him a row there in the seventh round to tell him to come out and up the pace a little bit because he was falling behind in points and, uh, and he did that successfully. Um, that was one of the better rounds for him. Yep, this is a good back action here coming up. Good right hand. But that's what I'm saying. If he'd have followed up with a left, uh, left hook there, um, it could have been more serious damage for Doherty. Good countering all the same by Doherty, and he walked into a yeah. left hand, so that round was fairly even, if not perhaps the way of Donny Hood, and Hood really sucking in lungfuls oh, of air. Second. Second out, round nine. Eight rounds gone then, four to go, and this has been a terrific, terrific bantamweight title fight who would still remember the Scottish bantamweight champion and hoping to add the British title to the Scottish title showed signs in the last round that uh, he could come forward and could catch the defending champion the man in black Drew Doherty Doherty having uh, been a little bit static in the last round one feels is maybe going to try and uh, move around a little bit more and do what he did in the earlier part of the contest and that's pick his man off yes i think he was just a wee bit more taken back with um how much energy donny hood is still left in him after um seven hard rounds um, donny hood's come out in the eighth round and give it a real go there and um, he's beginning to do the same here i mean um, jim this is unknown territory for drew now i mean uh, he's never beyond eight rounds before so um, I'm just looking uh, to see how he has here. Drew Doherty said at the weigh-in today that he trained for 12 rounds and was certainly prepared to go the 12 rounds. There's a fair bit of a, a swelling underneath his right eye, it seems. I think for all the blows that went in, Jim, I think it'd be a few short lies up there tonight. There's no place for, no place for faint hearts at all. well known to Pat Clinton, won uh, Ayub Khan and uh, he didn't come out of that too successfully but then Khan, one of the, the best boxers at his weight in Europe and that same year in 1988 he went to Durban and fought a very good South African called Francie Badenhorst and lost to him as well career went very slightly off the rails and after the loss to Ray Minus for the Commonwealth title he won nine in a row this time it's Doherty's turn to grin and as Pat Clinton rightly observed that's the sign of a man who has been hit and knows it and that's the first time we've seen Doherty uh, exhibit anything like that yes I mean I think uh, knowing Drew so well I don't think he was actually smiling at the punch he's actually smiling at himself being hit he's not used to being hit as much as times as that tonight well there's three more rounds after this and he may well have to get used to it if Donny Hood has anything to say about this And that's the kind of thing Drew does when he's sparring. If he gets hit with a shot, he smiles. Um, and that's him just admitting, admitting his own fault. A good round that. And once again, a rather scornful look from Donny Hood, the challenger in the direction of the champion, Drew Doherty. And uh, there hasn't been too much between them in the last couple of rounds. And Doherty, having built up a reasonable lead, may now be uh, just ever so slightly worried that he's maybe conceded a little bit of ground. 
and there was some very good work by Donny Hood in that last round. And he is very strong indeed. That was a lovely uh, combination, left and right, and perhaps the first time, Pat, that we've seen Hood do that. And if he'd listened to you earlier on, you never know what might have happened. Well, that's just true. I mean, um, that's what you just pay me for, Jim, to make comments and things like that. But uh, no, um, as I say, the corner men are probably telling him the same thing. Um, it's too many single shots, and it just showed there. Double them up, and you can see the result you get. Well, he's listening very intently to the advice coming through from his corner, who are saying, now, come on, you've got three rounds left. We have a feeling you can do it. And who knows? Nine rounds gone. Three to go. Drew Doherty on my card. Still ahead on points. But Hood has looked very, very strong. And Doherty for the first time in his professional career. Remember, this is only his 10th professional fight. He's now gone past eight rounds for the first time. He was very determined to take a, a title that has eluded him for the best part of half a dozen years. He won two eliminators. One against Graham O'Malley. And one against Keith Wallace. And he's never until tonight fought for a British title. The pace has just slowed down a little bit in this round, um, Jim. And, uh, quite rightly so. I mean, the boys have been going great guns for the last nine rounds. And uh, I knew it was only a matter of time before this would happen. But um, Dockery's boxing a little bit better in this round. He's making he slip me again, what he was started to do in the third and fourth round. And um, he's got to stick to the tactics. Push more than anything else. I don't know that Dockery wants to get involved in a toe-to-toe -to -toe slugging match, because I'm not sure that he would come off with the better. A nice little short left from the champion. Hood really has stuck to it remarkably well. Went through a very sticky patch. The last couple of rounds, he's more and more into it. Yeah, and um, you can see that he's put a lot in the last couple of rounds here, and he's just slowed down a little bit in this round. Dockery's getting his composure just back, just at the right moment, and now the tenth round, getting into the last two rounds. He's bobbing him even again. Took a good right hand there. Well, he um, certainly did, and uh, that stopped the bobbing and weaving. And almost imperceptibly, the knees of Drew Dockery gave ever so little wobble. Don't be having to cover up. Dave Paris, who has refereed this very well, it's been a pretty good contest for him because they've uh, obeyed everything to the letter. They're too busy getting on with the business of the British bantamweight title. Doherty's still jabbing quite nicely, but there's not the same uh, strength in the punches as there was earlier on. A little nudge at the end from Donny Hood as he goes back to his corner. And we've got two more rounds to go, and this has been as good a contest as we've seen in any Scottish boxing ring for many a long year. Well, Hood does look fresh uh, after the ends of round four, five, and six. He was breathing very heavily, and uh, he looks in great condition. And uh, what a great round that was. Some action from it coming up. Yes, I just give this shoot to Dockery because he was slipping and covering up very well, um, doubling his punches up. He got caught with a right hand, I think, coming up here. But um, at the same time, um, he was moving a lot better than he did in eight and nine rounds. Um, so at the moment I'm scoring it, um, hold on a minute. It's about um, six rounds to three and one, one bronze, Jim, I've got it. The penultimate round then to decide whether or not Drew Doherty is going to hold on to his British bantamweight title. The title he won with uh, such distinction and panache last June against fellow Scott Joe Kelly. 
And he's had his hands full in every single way with the challenger, the more experienced Donny Hood. 29 now, Hood. Two years older than Doherty. He left it perhaps a wee bit late to turn professional, but uh, he's made great progress in the last year or so. Jim, at this stage of the fight, this is where all your road work comes into it. Um, if you've been doing a lot of road work, the stamina will still be there, and you can go, well, not great guns at the end, but uh, the other things that you need it in the last couple of rounds, and then I can see the both boys have been doing the road work. Well, they really are in absolutely superb condition because uh, there's been nothing resembling a breather. They haven't been leaning on. They haven't been taking any advantage at all. They've been breaking when they've been told, and then they've been coming back together again. See that look of concentration in the face of Doherty. He just avoided a good left from Donny Hood. Good right from the challenger. The only thing the referee's had to do, only I think, is to stop them boxing after the bells went. <laughs> well, with the British title at stake, you'd hardly blame him for that. Again, Hood getting through with the left and uh, moving into the body with the right. Great stuff from the pair of them. Yes, it's punch for punch in this round at the moment. They're just um, standing, trading uh, two to two, but still a bit of spring in their legs. A minute of the uh, 11th and penultimate round to go. Doherty still covering up quite well. He's been caught on the odd occasion. But inside, he's countered better, and he's been able to shorten his punches, especially the left. But what a great warrior Donny Hood really is. He's come forward and leaned in all the way through. I mean, a smashing contest. All credit to both boys. This is a great fight. Uh, it's one of the best battle weight fights I've seen, I think. And I'm um, sure uh, one of these boys can go in and win a world title. A yeah, European title, first time in a world title. Uh, great contest. Blood now coming from the nose of uh, Doherty. That may just give Donny Hood a little bit of incentive, but there's only a matter of seconds to go before the end of this round. And then we have three more minutes, and they certainly will go to time. Good finish this time by Hood. It's normally Doherty who's finished the round stronger. And Donny Hood did it then. And he goes back, knowing that he's behind in points. And I have a feeling Hood is going to come out Pat Clinton with just about everything blazing to try to take this title from Drew Doherty. Yes, I mean, it's a cracking contest, as I said, and at um, the moment it's, it's about six rounds to four, um, one drawn. Some action then from that round. A good shot that was by Hood, and he yeah. tried to get inside, and Doherty very wary because he doesn't want to get involved. So there's Doherty, the 27-year-old. This just his 10th professional fight and his first defense of his British bantamweight title and he's got three more rounds I reckon he's ahead on points but he doesn't want to get drawn into anything resembling a dangerous confrontation with a very dangerous opponent Doherty will have to box his way to victory they touch gloves and the St Andrews Sporting Club with Dinner jacket and pride here at the 40 Crest Hotel give them a tremendous round of applause because what a scrap it's been all the way through. Under three minutes remaining. Drew Doherty in the black, the reigning British bantamweight champion. And his opponent, the challenger, Donny Hood. Two great little Scots. Yes, um, I'm just looking at them, Jim. They're starting this round as if it was the first round again. The way coming out, uh, both guns blazing. Just looking at my card, they've got it six rounds to three and two drawn it and the bucket it. So uh, I think Donna Hood would need a knockout to win. So Doherty, what feels the game plan is to stay out of trouble, keep jabbing, keep moving, and keep countering. Avoid the possibility of Donny Hood throwing something really big at him. Just like that. Doherty moved out of the way. It has been a terrific contest. The pace has scarcely slackened from the first bell. Indeed, there were times when it became really quite frenetic. They never lost sight of the fact that they're both very capable boxers. 
Yes, both boys have got a stand innovation for the end of this fight. I mean, it's, it's been one of the best fights I've seen here. Um, probably from the likes of Jim Ward and Ken Buchanan, I think, um, 21 years ago. Well, Jim Ward and Ken Buchanan on the top table on the raised podium will watch this and think, my goodness, did we do this sort of thing all those years ago? They didn't get very much money for it in those days. About 4,000 and 2,000 apiece, I think, was the share. Uh, what great value for money they gave on that night here in this very room in this very ring and what great value for money these two are giving Drew Doherty within perhaps about a minute of uh, a first successful defense of his British bantamweight title but if it is to be a successful defense I doubt very much if anybody will take him closer than Donny Hood a gum shield has come out Dave Paris has picked it up Donny Hood's gum shield it was Hood really working hard now. Lovely crisp jab from Doherty. That's where he's been at his best. Takes a left in return. Oh, a thunderingly good contest is. My goodness, what a pace they've kept up. And they look as if, like walking through Cannon all those years ago, they can go 15 rounds. Well, yeah, Sam Simpson gives them a warm round of applause. And the crowd really getting behind both of them. This has been a superb contest. Doherty now looking tired for the first time, and no wonder. And Donny Hood. It's taken back to his corner where they'll give the gum shield a quick bit of a wash. They'll put it back in place. And back they come again. They'll have to stop the watches. About 15 seconds or so remaining. And let's see whose hand Dave Parrish is going to raise. A tremendous, tremendous scrap this for the British bantamweight title. As good as you'll see anywhere too. Gallant little men. Doherty embraces his man, goes over to the neutral corner. The Paris waits, and he's holding out the hand, I think, of Drew Doherty. And Doherty comes over, and his hand is raised, and Drew Doherty absolutely delighted. He will know he has been in the toughest contest of his professional career. And Drew Doherty, at 27, year, 27 years of age, in his 10th professional contest, has retained his British bantamweight title. It was a splendid, splendid bout right from the first bell. Doherty really has been in such a war with Donny Hood. He didn't have to go looking for him at all. Hood came straight after him from the first bell. Some lovely counter-punching by Drew Doherty all the way through. One or two times towards the uh, second half of the contest when it looked very much as if Donny Hood was going to get to him. But Doherty held him off. And Doherty really a very, very worthy champion. But that, Pat Clinton, had you been... Uh, a bantamweight, you'd have been proud to be in that fight. Oh yes, I mean, absolutely fantastic contest. Uh, I'm just glad for young Drew, because I know how much the Lonsdale deal that means to him, and all credit to Donny Hood, what a great fight that was, and I probably think that that's his best fight ever in his career, and he's come off in the losing end. Well, Donny Hood has been a WBC international champion. He's fought unsuccessfully for the European title. He's fought unsuccessfully for the Commonwealth title. And now, after winning two British bantamweight title eliminators, he's fought unsuccessfully for the British bantamweight title. But it was a splendid contest, and full marks to both of them, to Donny Hood, the challenger. Alas, an unsuccessful challenger. And what a great performance by Drew Doherty, who really had to work very, very hard against a very gallant Scott, his fellow Scott, Donny Hood, Doherty. Uh, looks towards the man who's given him so much help, Peter Harrison, and the uh, instantly recognisable figure there of Dunkey Jarrett, both working hard to remove those gloves, gloves which he wore with great pride through those 12 rounds, and uh, the Lonsdale belt, which he won against Joe Kelly away back in June, will be placed around his waist once again, and Drew Doherty's ambition at this stage is to make sure that he wins that Lonsdale belt outright, one of the most uh, prized pieces of uh, sporting hardware that you're going to get and Doherty thoroughly deserves this yes uh, I'm just looking at my card I scored at seven rounds to three and two drawn I mean it maybe looked like it's a big gap but uh, in the rounds I gave to Doherty it was just for them um, he was flinging maybe three punches to two to hoots and um, two punches so um, really I, I gave the four rounds to Doherty but uh, in the day a fantastic contest was, um, Tommy Gilmer, the man who persuaded Drew Doherty to come to him, says a few words of congratulations to his man. and a half points. Hood, 106 and a half points. The winner and still British bantamweight champion, Drew Doherty from Condorit.
Well, confirmation there that Joe Doherty has retained his British bantamweight title. He's done it in considerable style. It was an extraordinarily good contest. No wonder Tommy Gilmore is absolutely delighted. And Joe Doherty, the Lonsdale belt, placed around his waist. And the photographers, needless to say, queuing up for the pictures that will be in tomorrow morning's papers. Drew Doherty thoroughly delighted with himself and it gives everybody here in the St Andrews Sporting Club a great round of applause. Well, what a tremendous contest that was. Donny Hood putting up a big battle, but Drew Docker fight, but I knew it was going to be because Donny's just one of the fighters. They just keep going all the time. He's the same stable as my last opponent, Joe Kelly. And the two of them are roughly the same style. And I knew it was going to be a hard fight for the start. You said beforehand that you knew every move he'd make. Aye. Was that the way it turned out? Well, I near enough, but he's, he's good with the feints. He, he shows you one hand and then punches the other hand, and I was ready for it. I was just waiting and him fainting, throwing dummy punches and coming with the other hand, and it worked out. I've trained hard and tactics have worked out okay. Pat, are you happy with your man? Yes, very, very much so. I think my father would be more happier, but um, he boxed really absolutely fantastic. I mean, for a man that's only went eight rounds before, and to get into his deepest 12 rounds, with uh, Donny Hood with 30 fights experience, he done box absolutely fantastic. Uh, he thought it was a hard fight, but I had him winning it a bit more clearly than that. Were there any points you were concerned at all? Because Donny Hood certainly put up a rare old battle. Yeah, I mean, um, Donny's a great fighter, I mean, a very hard customer. Um, the Drew boxed very, very comfortably. Um, the first round he was a wee bit, a wee bit worried in the first, but it's just nerves. But it, it went, once he settled into his tail, the box absolutely fantastic. And I'm glad to see he win, and I hope he keeps that Lonsdale belt. You're hoping to follow this man eventually down the world title trail, Drew. What, what would you like the next step to be? Well, I just want to try and win the Lonsdale belt first. I said to you before, Rob, two years come from the same place his father taught us. Now Peter's put a great, uh, you know, his experience, he's given me a lot of experience, but his father learned me how to box and then his brother. And, for the two years to come from the, about the same area, it's fantastic. What about you? You have to get that dicky bow off shortly and get down to business against baby Jake McLala. Yes, that's it. Um, really, I'm looking forward to my fight uh, March of 6. I'm starting my spam probably tomorrow night. And um, after watching that, I'm going to be doing a lot more rounds of spam, I think. Thanks, Pat. Yes. Thanks, Drew, and well done. Thank you.